One of the deepest things I've picked up from you in recent times is the concept of the shadow mean. And I guess the intuition here is that we have some historical data for some phenomenon, whether that's market drawdowns or deaths from war or deaths from pandemics. And those data can appear to follow a thin tailed distribution, but it's naive to assume that the process that's generating them is actually thin tailed because in the background and behind the curtains of reality could actually be a fat tailed process that's generating the data. It's just that it takes a really long time for extreme events to show up. So fat tailed distributions can masquerade as thin tailed ones. And bringing this to statistical moments, the mean of the data we've observed is better thought of as the sample mean. And you have this approach where you work out what you call the shadow mean, which I guess is equivalent to like the population mean. That is the mean of the process that's actually generating the data. Um, and you've done this for warfare. And I want to talk about that specifically, but just first generally for others who may want to explore this approach, can you outline the basic steps in your process? Is it number yeah, one, it, 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 estimate the alpha, number no, two, no, no, plug-in no, 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 no. estimation? Yeah, so, or? So, let, let, let's uh, explain uh, to Please. the viewers what, uh, or listeners what uh, do I mean by shadow mean. Let's take a one tail distribution. Mm -hmm. Okay, You have the visibly in the sample of 30 observation, you're not going to get events that happen less than 1% of the time. Mm -hmm. You agree? Yes. So for a Gaussian, it's not a big deal because these that happen less than 1% of the time have less impact on them. The other probably gets increasingly smaller, so it doesn't matter much. So with a small sample, you don't have a big shadow mean effect. Actually, with the Gaussian number, it has to be a one-tailed Gaussian, so so a low variance like normal, right? Like height, okay? Yeah. So you, you observe a bunch of people, and you have an idea what what the average height in town is, okay? Now, when we talk about things that are open-ended, and fat tailed, okay, visibly, most observation will be below the mean. Mm -hmm. So when you compute the mean, it's going to be biased down. Yeah. From uh, what they call empirical observation. Yeah. So the empirical distribution is not empirical. <laughs> and that's what is central for us. Yeah. So I take the S&P 500, and uh, you can figure out that uh, the the if you want to stress test it over the next X days, <laughs> taking the past 10 years low, take the past years, the worst deviation past 10 years is not represented because of insufficient sample as you go further in the tail. You take industries like biotech, for example, it is a heavy tailed industry. So what you observe is less than, uh, I think I wrote it in a black swan. The observed mean underestimates the true mean. Mm. Whereas for insurance, it overestimates the true mean. Right. For banking. Because one is to the right, one is to the left. Uh, so I uh, looked at what has a positive shadow mean and what has a negative shadow mean. If you're selling volatility, you have a shadow mean that's going to be way lower than your, your observed mean. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking for wars, even without survivorship bias, which is another story, we have a, uh, a process that's vastly nastier than what we observed. About three times nastier. Okay, it's three times next year, yes. So in other words, um, the, the, the historical process underestimates the true process. Mm. And, and we published in, uh, we, we published about the shadow mean in, 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 in various venues. We have a paper in, uh, in Physica A on wars, but we applied it in quantitative finance to uh, operation loss. Mm -hmm. I published it in a journal called Quantitative Finance, and, and we applied it to other domains. But that's an idea that I wrote about in the Black Swan. I'll tell you, where's the invisible? Because visibly, the 
by definition, the hundred year flood is not going to be present in five year data. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have a shadow, I mean, if you limit it to five years. Yeah. So the, the other big innovation of the work that you did on war was this concept of inter arrival time. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, the, the waiting time for wars with deaths above a threshold of 10 million people is a, a bit over a hundred years. Yeah. And that means that be, because we haven't, just because we haven't observed any, like the last, the last conflict with deaths of more than 10 million was World War II, nearly yeah. 80 years ago now. But we can't infer from that that violence no, no, is declining. No, you can't see violence is declining. Plus uh, another thing that we discovered that's very robust is inter-arrival time is, has an exponential distribution. Like a poisson. You know, the inter-arrival time of Poisson mm. is, uh, it means it's memoryless. Right. In other words, if it arrives on average every, say, 100 years, and then we haven't had one in 100 years, okay, you, you don't say, oh, it's, it's coming. It's memoryless. So you wait, you wait another 100 it's, years. You, the expectations stay the same. Yeah. Yeah. So what structural explanations do you think are generating the fat-tailedness of war? Is it just the development of increasingly destructive technologies and then maybe also some globalization and the fact that violence can spread mimetically? I don't, I mean, I, I, I looked at the data, I reflected the data, violence did not decline. I did not put my concerns and my concerns that in the past to do what's been done in Gaza now mm. required much more. So we have a lot more destructive uh, the ability, I mean, to kill is greater. In the past, uh, you know, it would take a long time to kill, uh, you know, so, so many people. Yeah. So you have to do it manually. Yeah. And now we industrialize the process, which is very sad. Yes. And then I have, I've started branching out now to foreign policy, realizing that, that effectively there's some things in that SJD, Society of Judgment Decision Making, when they analyzed the Vietnam War, and and there are a lot of lot of good things in, in that in that uh, in that industry, and uh, all the biases, you realize that we have the United States, the most dynamic country, the very vital, was completely incompetent uh, State Department. So you realize the decision for war. I mean, think of Afghanistan how naive it is not to figure out what's going on. So they're going to make mistakes, of course, more mistakes, of course. And these alliances, like you back up, not understanding consequences. So it's sort of like Mao's sparrows. You back up Bin Laden, not realizing that, that you helped Bin Laden, you built a machine that will turn against you. Right. It's like the Hydra. Like? The Hydra. We cut off a yeah, yeah, and cut, we'll grow back. No, no, but, but, but they create it. So... Of a interventionist foreign policy yeah. on the part of the United States, and then oh, spreading democracy or stuff like that is actually more dangerous than just isolationism. So the culture is <clears throat> very different today, right? Which is why you know, outside of our statistical work, I have to say that there's this incompetence dressed in sophistication that makes the world uh, more dangerous. So then, if we go. If we move back through the historical data, the wars become less fat-tailed as you move into the past? No, the, the, the fat-tailedness is the same, what we call the scale. Mm -hmm. The alpha doesn't change, the scale changes. So I think one of the things that you and Professor Pasquale Chirillo found was that in the past, death counts were exaggerated both because conquerors and victims had incentives to exaggerate. Obviously, the, the conquerors want to appear more intimidating. No, 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 no. This, I made this comment later on after looking at the data uh, by, because when we analyzed past wars, we, we try to figure out a robust way to look at the structure of, of uh, the random variable by taking for every war different accounts and then randomizing between the high and the low. Say Algeria's war, uh, the French had 
280,000, for example, the Algerians had 1 million, since then everything had been revised. So we took both numbers and randomized. So we created 150,000 histories between all the numbers that we had with permutation from within the high mm-hmm. and the low estimate. And we figure out that, boom, they all give the same alpha. Right. So we were, we, uh, we, but the motivation was that people lie about numbers. And do so, that? Is that true? And, 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 and ours is to remove the effect of, of, of different estimates. Yeah. Of them or their enemies, you see? Okay. So aside from that, in a non probabilistic way, I myself observed that uh, a lot of people like to exaggerate their, their uh, killings. Yeah. Like uh, Genghis Khan, because it was optimal. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have it. People think that that you're going to kill a lot of people; that they won't oppose you. So, which is why you do a lot of uh, stuff for show. Yes, yeah, a lot of devastation for show. Yes, that makes sense. Victims exaggerating their suffering was less intuitive to me, but then I remembered, you know, Tom Holland's work or Rene Girard's work, or even your treatment of Christianity and skin in the game, I realized what makes Christianity unique is the valorization of the victim. And Christianity and Shiite Islam. Right. The only the two religion yeah. that, uh, that, that, that have this uh, glorification of victimhood. Yes. Which is, is uh, Christianity and Shiite Islam. Yes. Shiite Islam, when they have a martyr, you know, like and there's still been, been after the murder of... Uh, Hassan and Hussein, you know, uh, 1,300 years of uh, mourning or yeah. stuff like that, a glorification, basically for, for just being killed. Yes. So I was wondering if, if the glorification of victimhood, if the spread of Christianity is um, maybe what was driving the exaggeration of death counts on the victim side? I, I don't know. We, we don't have good records of what happened in the period right before Christianity dominates simply because we had a big transition and uh, history is written by the winners of course by the Christians yeah so we don't have a clean record of what happened before but we know that there are some purely uh, uh, invented fabricated uh, series of events of uh, of mar- martyrdom in uh, in what's now North Africa in southern Mediterranean and the Roman southern Mediterranean. Yeah. So we know a lot of them existed and we know a lot of them, a lot of these things didn't exist or exist under the same story in 17 different places. Right. Or seven different places. Right. So we know that it either existed too much or did not exist. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the implications of your work on war with. Pasquale is that because of these inter-arrival times, we really should wait about 300 years without seeing a conflict of the scale of World War II. Yeah, if you had to wait 300 years, then you'd say, oh, the the distribution has changed. Yes, then we could say. But but we have had no information statistically from the past 80 years. Yeah. And that was uh, the thing about uh, Pinker thinks that... uh, the world has changed, and he couldn't understand our insults. Just like Tetlock, he couldn't understand the statistical uh, uh, claim yeah. against that. Yeah. So you think that, I mean, it's possible that the data generating processes could change. It's just that we haven't seen anything that would overturn the so null hypothesis. That's exactly, that, that's exactly, that exactly the point. Yes. That's one way to look at I don't like the null hypothesis story. Yeah, because uh, that's for mostly for a, a applied statistician working in a, okay. in a uh, in the medical lab, all right, and, and or, or psychology department. It's, but 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 that's pretty much. But the gist of it is, is there. That's the intuition. Yes. Yes, and so we have we have no statistical grounds on which to say violence has declined. None. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, it's, and we didn't uh, even go to the second step. I said it has increased, which is what I saw, but I said I don't want to make that point statistically. Mm, mm. 